Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. I'm working on a pair of my spindler socks, and since this design has just a little bit of cabling in it, I'd like to take a few minutes to go over some basic cable notation. I think of cabling as one of the quintessential techniques in knitting, but some knitters are intimidated by the process because a finished piece with cabling can look quite complicated. In reality, to make a cable, you're simply knitting a few of your stitches out of order. Changing the order makes certain parts of the fabric pop out as you cross some stitches over others. Today, I'm going to stick with the basics and we're only going to look at cables that involve all knit stitches, no purls, and we'll only talk about cables where two sections of stitches are reordered, not more advanced cables with more crossed sections. First, I'll explain some common ways that cables are written and then we'll look at how they're charted. Let's get started. There are lots of ways to reorder your stitches to create a cable. There are also lots of ways you may see the same cable abbreviated in different patterns. Counterintuitively, this is usually done to simplify the instructions of an individual pattern. I'll start with the notation system that is the most specific and work out to some of the broader notations. The first notation system gives you all the information you need to work a cable in just a few symbols. And once you know how to decipher it, you won't need a long explanation of how your stitches should be rearranged on your cable needles. Here are the abbreviations for two of the cables that are used in my spindler sock pattern. 2 over 4 LC, 2 over 4 RC. The first number tells you how many stitches are going to pop out at you in the finished fabric. So in this case, for both cables, two stitches are going to pop out in the finished fabric. This second number tells you how many stitches those popped out stitches cross over. So in our case, I have two popped out stitches and they're going to cross over four stitches that are behind them. The letters in each of the abbreviation tell you the slant of the cable. So you'll either have a left cable that slants up and to the left, or a right cable that slants up and to the right. In practice, when you see the notation 2 over 4 RC, you quickly know that it's a right cable. Since it's a right cable, look at the number on the right first and slip that many stitches onto your cable needle. So I'm going to slip one, two, three, four stitches onto my cable needle. For a right cable, your stitches on the cable needle are always held at the rear or the back of your work. Now look at the number on the other side of the notation and you know how many stitches to knit. So I'm going to knit two stitches off of my knitting needles. And then when that's done, I can knit the four stitches that were held on my cable needle. And my two over four right cable is complete. When you see the notation two over four LC, you quickly know that it's a left slanting cable. 
Since it's a left cable, I'm going to first look at the left number and slip that many stitches onto my cable needle. So in this case, it's one, two stitches. For a left cable, the stitches on your cable needle are always held at the lead or the front of your work. Now I'll look at the other number, the four, and I know that's how many stitches I should knit off of my regular knitting needle. So I'll knit my four stitches. And then I can work the stitches that were held on my cable needle. And now my two over four left cable is complete. In other patterns, you may see these same two cables abbreviated in a more simplified manner. They could be written as a six stitch left cable or a six stitch right cable. In which case, you quickly see how many stitches you'll need for your cable, six, and you'll know the cable should slant to the left or to the right, but you'll need to refer to the pattern's detailed definitions to figure out how many stitches cross over the other stitches. Be aware that these simplified abbreviations could be defined differently in different patterns. Since the cables are six stitches wide, you could have one stitch crossing over five, or two over four, like we do in this pattern, or three over three, or four over two, or five over one. So make sure to read the cables definitions in your pattern. Even more generally, this same cable could be defined or abbreviated simply as left cable or right cable, or even front cable or back cable. This time, since the abbreviations are so simple, you would definitely need to refer to your pattern's abbreviation definitions, both to figure out how many total cable stitches there are and to figure out how many stitches are crossed over the others. Now let's look at the charted symbols for the same two cables and decipher what information the chart tells us. I've included blank squares around our primary cable symbols just to help us get oriented. A good knitting chart will have a key to define each symbol so that can always be used as a reference whenever you need it, but the symbols themselves not only give us the same key pieces of information that we saw in our original notation, the number of stitches that pop out, the number of stitches that are behind those popped out stitches, and the cable slant, the symbols also visually represent what the cable will look like and how the stitches will be repositioned after the cable is complete. First, recognize that the total width of the symbol tells us the total number of stitches in the cable. So for this symbol, we can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six squares wide. So our cable is going to be worked across six total stitches. And the same is true for the other symbol. It's one, two, three, four, five, six stitches wide. So the cable is going to be worked across six total stitches. Now look for the two parallel lines that completely extend from the bottom to the top of the symbol. The space in between those two lines represents the stitches that pop out on the front of the fabric. So in this case, we know that two stitches are going to pop out here and two stitches are going to pop out here. 
The slant of those parallel lines also shows us the slant of the cable. So this one slants up and to the left, and this one slants up and to the right. Now let's look for the two parallel lines that don't completely extend from the bottom to the top of the symbol. The space between those two lines represents the stitches that are towards the back of the fabric. So in that ca this case, we have one, two, three, four stitches that are at the back. And over here, we also have one, two, three, four stitches that are held at the back. So finally, our symbols it, symbols are going to show us how the stitches are actually reordered as we knit. So when we are knitting our left cable, we knit across. The first two stitches are slipped onto our cable needle, and we can see that's part of the section that's held at the front. So those stitches are held at the front. While we knit remain, the remaining stitches, three, four, five, and six, and then we come back to what's on our cable needle, needle and knit stitches one and two. For our second cable, we'll knit across. The first one, two, three, four stitches are held on the cable needle. And this time those stitches belong to the portion of the cable that is at the back. We knit the remaining two stitches, stitch five and six. And then we come back and work what's on our cable needle, stitches one, two, three, and four. I hope you enjoyed getting familiarized with some basic ways cables can be abbreviated and charted. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends. If you'd like to try some cabling in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my spindler socks pattern. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!